What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this video, I've been asked to do it a few times, pretty much what we're gonna do is be going through all my running gear from shoes, watches, heart rate monitor, headphones, pretty much what I use for everyday training and also races and just everything in general. So yeah, I'm keen to get into this video. I've got a few pairs of shoes, so I'm gonna dive into the details of each pair and show you guys what I recommend and what I wouldn't recommend because, man, it's one of those things that when you get into running, you just don't have the knowledge around it all. So hopefully I can help a few of these out with this video. Now, just go like, subscribe if you enjoy the content and I'll keep these videos coming. But yeah, like I said, let's get stuck in. Now, what we're gonna do first is get stuck into the easy everyday trainers that I wear. First up, we're gonna go through these two pairs of ASICs and I'm gonna grab the other one because there we go. First one, ASICs Kensei Blast, ASICs Noosa Tri 13. So this one, as you can see, it's um, got a bit of cushion. Great everyday running shoe, I don't mind it. Although I think it is too small for me, this one. This is a size nine. I should have went a nine and a half. Same with this, a little bit too small. Should have went nine, nine and a half. Now, let's stick with this one first. So, like I said, Noosa Tri 13 looks sick. I love wearing this to gym and stuff. It's got the nice little tie up laces. As you can see there, it's got like a little clip type of thing. Um, pretty comfortable shoe and yeah pretty good like easy train i won't go too into detail with this it's got a fair bit of cushion and bounce to it but nothing too crazy this other shoe that the nike <laughs> nike the asics kensei blast i got these sent to me from asics and to be honest they're not a, they're not a good running shoe they're i use them for gym for leg days because they're actually very solid and flat at the bottom and yeah, not the best for running. I didn't like running in them. They were a little bit too small, but great um, shoe just for gym and stuff like that. And I think they look pretty cool. So that's my ASICs. Next, I'm gonna compare these two. So we have the Nike Invincible Run 2. You guys probably know that I've been loving these shoes. I wear them pretty much nearly every day. And this is the New Balance. 1080 v11 now why i will compare these two is they're both both pretty similar um they both have like a big cushion at the bottom to be honest i think these are my favorite two pairs for everyday running purely because they both have a really flat um wide base especially through um, the arch area or through like the middle of the shoe. It's very wide so I feel like these ones with like a narrow arch through the middle it allows your feet to move around a lot. Now when that's going to happen I feel is when you're going to get the most injuries when your legs are just moving all over the place where if you're going to have a shoe like this with such a big cushion down at the bottom then it just doesn't allow your knees and legs to move all over the place. They're gonna stay pretty stable and your knee, all your joints are just gonna love them as well. Like, as you can see, this, these have a massive cushion along the bottom. That is how, nice and flat um, and yet yeah, super wide and cushiony and to be honest, ideal, so. These are the Nike Invincible Run 2s and they're probably my favorite everyday running shoe at the moment. These, I'll probably, I reckon I'll probably put like 500 to 1,000 kilometers on these. Um, another one, like I said, flat at the bottom, super cushiony and the only thing with these is at the back, your foot can tend to kind of slip out a little bit there. Um, but overall, another good, running shoes, so 1080 V11 New Balance, Nike Invincible Run 2s. Next I'm gonna compare these two that I have, 
because they're pretty similar as well. We got the Nike um, Zoom Fly 3. There is, there is now a Zoom Fly 5 out. So these are a few years old, um, but they're not too bad for like an easy day trainer. Although you see a lot of difference with these, a lot, lot more narrow through the middle, a bit more springy than those other ones, but to be honest, I think I just prefer something that's more cushioned to stop me getting those injuries and stuff. Um, Saucony Endorphin Speed 2s. These are not the pro version. They don't have the carbon fiber plate in them. Um, but I just love wearing these for gym because they go with like so many um, outfits and that. A lot of people love these for like an everyday trainer. I suppose they do have like a bit of spring and stuff to them. But me personally, I don't really care if I don't have a lot of spring in my uh, in my everyday trainer. I'm, I'm more, to me, I just want to run every day without getting niggly injuries. And if I can do that, then that, that'll make me happy. But these, both these shoes have like a narrow um, base through the middle of them, which I feel is when I stand on them or when I run, you, I do get a lot more movement than those other two pairs of shoes, which me in particular, I don't, I didn't actually like. Um, so I'll, I'll run in these every now and then again, but I won't use them as like an everyday shoe. I won't wear them back to back. Now, trail shoes. Now, I haven't hit the trails in a long time, but I love trail running. I love um, going on hikes and stuff like that. And these are my two trail shoes. I've got the Asics. These are the Asics Tribuco Max. As you can see, they've got a big, um, pretty big um, base on them. They're actually very, very good trail shoe although the lip on them is very wide and kind of looks like shit to be honest which for me like obviously it's just looks but it looks kind of weird um but nice tie down with the laces and stuff and then you shove them inside that lip which you do on most trail shoes so asics trabuco max they're pretty good trail shoe and then i think i prefer these these are solomon ultra glide these are just super comfy um, and I think both both these shoes I got nine and a half and they both fit perfect so there we have it these are amazing now when it comes to racing you guys probably seen I do run in either vapor flyers or alpha flyers now these are the vapor flyers this is the version one and this is the version number two now with these shoes i would only recommend wearing them for your speed sessions your races or just pretty much any time that you're running fast don't wear them for your easy runs if you have a pair of these and these are like your only running shoes then get a pair of shoes that you can wear for easy runs because these for one they won't last as long as your other shoes they probably only last about 500 kilometers maybe and yeah they're no good for your legs and body to be running in them all the time. They have the carbon fiber plate, which is amazing for races and speed. Like they're the best shoes you're gonna buy on the market for running um, a race. But yeah, they're not made for speed. They're not made for comfort at all. So I wouldn't recommend wearing them every single day, but they are amazing. Like I said, they have a carbon fiber plate. So when your foot hits the ground, they literally just spring you up out of the air. It's like, if you haven't worn a carbon fiber shoe before, you, would ha you wouldn't have a clue what it's like because it literally is a game changer. I think the first time I bought these, the first pair I bought, pretty sure I scraped like two minutes off my personal best on like a, on like a 10 kilometer run like that. Insane um, shoes. So version two, Vaporfly version one. Now the biggest difference is obviously that, that upper mesh. It's just a different material. Um, that's, that's that version two there. And you can see version two is like got these little holes and stuff in it. It's probably like more breathable, but um, to me like com comfort wise, I think these are more comfortable, um, but both amazing. We move to the Alpha Fly version one. Now you guys might've seen, I've worn these for a fair few of my races this year. But to be honest, 
I think they might have caused me injuries. They do have like an extra four mil drop at the back here. They do feel like you're standing on stilts, like they are so high up. And the thing is, when you're, when you're up that high, there's so much more room for injury, like the Vaporfly, yeah, they, yes, they have got a bit of a platform, but you still feel very close to the ground. Um, these feel like you're up walking on stilts, and to be honest, when you run, yeah, there's so much, there's so much ways that your legs can just get injured from wearing a shoe like this. So for some people, they work really well. For some people, they don't. And I, after a few races, I got a, um, like a bit of a calf injury and knee pain as well. And I feel like it may be because I was wearing these. So I'll probably only wear them occasionally, um, maybe for like a five or 10K race every now and then, but I probably won't be running over like say 15 k's in these shoes but they look sick look at that it's an amazing looking shoe i love this colorway as well so i will be holding on to them and i'll probably wear them occasionally but yeah just not the best to wear every day for me personally anyway so that's all those running shoes i have got an alpha fly version 2 that I'm going to pick up so I'll try add this on in this video. Alright now we're going to go through a few little accessories that I wear that help me out with training and pretty much getting um, in condition for a race. First we got the heart rate monitor. So Garmin 1 I have got the package somewhere but I think I'm pretty sure I bought this off Amazon and pretty much just goes around your chest um, and you have to wet it because what I thought, I thought this thing was the actual heart rate monitor. This thing, it actually, there's, there's little tabs on the back here and they actually, that goes there and it actually reads your heart rate through those pads um, and then goes back to the receiver. So because this is a Garmin one, or like, I think pretty sure you can like connect this to your Apple Watch as well, but it will give you real time data with pretty much everything and also like your stride length. Um, and just when you wear one of these, you can literally look at your watch and as you go up and down pace, you can just see it change so quickly. Um, so this is the best, like most accurate thing you're gonna do if you wanna proper get dialed down on this heart rate training, which I'm massive about. When I do these 20 to 25 kilometer runs, even 30K runs, I'm trying to keep my heart rate under 150. That's my goal. And this helps heaps to be able to, um, yeah, just stay on track of that. And it just gives me a heap of data. So there you have it. Garmin heart rate monitor, um, definitely. If you want to take training to the next level, grab one of these. We've got the quad lock um, armband. See if you can see that. Now this, you would have seen me wear it before. Um, it pretty much, can pretty much show you. Just goes like that. And then it's got a strap that goes like that. I wear it up here pretty tight. Now I don't wear it when I race anymore, but um, yeah, it just goes like that. I got, you need the, you need the special case, that's a quad lock case. It's got a little thing that it slots into. You just put it like that, twist it, bang, and it doesn't move around at all. Like I've ran my, sick, my second quickest half marathon, I wore this. Like literally I could run any race with this, I don't even feel it, but um, yeah. Great little accessory. So in the morning when I'm going for easy runs and stuff, I'll chuck this on. Usually if it's through winter, I'll have a long sleeve shirt on, which makes it even more comfortable. You're wearing it over the top of a shirt, makes it heaps more comfortable. With the shirt off, it does get a little bit of rubbing and stuff occasionally, but it is a great device, especially if you want to take your phone. My, my watch doesn't actually hold music. So if I want to listen to music, I, um, I've got to take the quad lock. Um, these are the headphones that I use. There we go. Jabra Elite Sport. Let's see if I can show you there. 
pretty much just wireless earbuds. Now these are the Jabra Elite 75T. Any of these versions, I think these are just like, they're just so much cheaper than like AirPods. I think these, when you get them on special, they might be like $150 or something like that. Um, yeah, you just open up the case, just like a normal headphone and pop them in and I can't hear much at all. They don't come out at all. You can kind of see them there. I love them. I've had them for a long time. I've had, I think I've had this pair for a year, maybe two years, and I haven't, I sweat like crazy. I, yeah, they're just a great pair of headphones. So, Jabra Elite 75T. I think I've got the box here somewhere, but yeah, if you want to ask me any questions about any of this stuff, just send me a DM, leave me a comment, and I'll let you know the finer details of some of this stuff. I can send you links to buy any of this stuff. Um, these are, the hats that I wear, you always see me running in a hat. Purely, I've got long hair, so it flaps around in the wind. I don't like that. And also sweat, I don't, sweat and sun as well. If it's um, if I'm running and it's sunny outside, cap obviously keeps the sun out of my eyes. If it's not sunny, I'll often just put it backwards and pretty much stops the sweat getting in my face because if you, run, if you know, if you run when it's hot and sweaty without like a hat, you know what it's like you get sweat dripping down into your eyes and stuff like that so we'll chuck one of these on just to show you they fit my head i got a tiny head i hardly find hats that um, fit my head properly so this is a nike tailwind cap this is another one as well nike tailwind in a white version i like having a few um, options these are actually really hard to find in different colors. The black and white are easy to find, but the other colors are pretty hard. This is the same one, but in green. So we've got the green, white, and black. And then this is actually, I don't know if you can see the details on this cap, but it's got really nice, fine little details. Now this is, um, I'm not sure what, what this one. This one's just, oh, this one's a tailwind as well. And, it's a blue version, so I like having options. <laughs> so, there we go, that's the running caps. Oh, my hair is just a mess. Now we're gonna go over some running clothes. All right guys, now before I move into clothing, I'm gonna show you what watch I have, because it's probably the most asked question I get. I swear I get one of these questions like every day, because I always put up little photos of after my runs and this is the one that I have so you can see there Garmin Forerunner 935 and I'll take it off and quickly show you this is what mine looks like turn the light on there see if I can show you that's how I've got, got it set up as well. See if we can, there you go. If you want me to let you know what like watch face and stuff I use, I can show you. These are some armbands. It comes with the standard black one here. And I just, these other ones, you can just buy them off Amazon. I think they're like 10 to $15. And I got obviously the dark blue one on at the moment. I just like being able to switch between them, especially when I've got like a kind of race outfit on or chuck an arm band on to match. Nice little addition. So that's what watch I use. And I think in the other in another video, I also might show you how to set up your Garmin for like workouts and stuff like that, because I feel like a lot of people probably don't know how to do that as well. So. Now we're gonna get into the clothing that I've got. All right, first things first, we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up, socks. Now on a daily basis, I pretty much wear whatever ankle socks. Doesn't really make too much of a difference with like easy runs, with like comfy shoes and stuff like that. But I reckon it does make a big difference when you're either going for one, like a really long run, or a run that you don't usually do. And then also like your track workouts, pretty much all your high pace stuff. So 
like when I showed you the shoes, the vapor flies and the alpha flies, I won't wear like a shitty cheap sock when I'm wearing those. I'll wear something really good that's cushioned. So these are a few pairs that I've got here. So one of the pairs that I really like, got the two times U, um, they're like a mid-length sock. And as you can see, they have a lot of cushion at the bottom. See if I can show that to you. Lots of cushion and even if you have a pair of shoes that are maybe a tiny bit too big, these might be a perfect sock for you. So they've got like your left and right symbol on them. They are around $20 each, they're not cheap, but they have padding literally at the ball of your foot there and at the back and all around just a great, great sock and really make the shoes feel much more comfortable. Got the same just in a white pair as well. I usually wear the black pair more than the white. Then we've got a Nike version, but these are an ankle sock. So very similar. You got a lot of padding around the ball of the foot and then at the front as well. And then you got a big tab there, which will stop those arch blisters. So another great sock. Um, wear these for races and stuff as well. Breathable at the top, they're light at the top and cushiony as down the bottom. And again, they're gonna help you heaps when you're going for like a race and a PB. They're gonna stop your feet getting sore and yeah, like I rarely get blisters and a lot of it is to do with just making sure I got, I'm wearing the right one running equipment. I'm not gonna wear a pair of shoes that rub or socks that rub, or shitty cheap socks. So invest a little bit of money in socks. So Nike, Nike cushion ones, and I've got the two times U one, and I've also got like a Nike, these Nike Spark socks, which I wore these for my recent 10K race. They're a lot thinner, they don't, so yeah, like I said, these are the Nike Spark socks. Um, they're like an ankle length, so see there Nike symbol at the front they don't have as much cushion they don't have much cushion at all so I think that would be great for like a 10k race but if I was to run a marathon I probably probably wouldn't wear these because they might just be a little bit too thin I'd probably opt for something like two times you with a bit more cushion in them so that's socks anyway it's a much bigger deal than you actually think especially if you're a person that gets blisters or you get sore feet invest in some good socks so next we're going to move up we're going to go like i said we're going to work our way up so we'll go tights first because if you guys have seen photos and videos of me running you know i wear tights um most most of the time i just wear three quarter ones or ones that are down just above the knee um and I just wear the Nike ones. Now, obviously you can buy skins two times you, like they go all the way up to like $100, but the ones that I love the most, which I think are fine, are just the $40 Nike ones. And they look, they look sick as well. So here we have, I've got these in like three different colors. So show you those Nike Pros. They got the tick down the bottom left. See that there, and yeah, I got these in grey, black, and white, and I just pretty much rotate them. So I'll just wear whatever color is going to match my outfit, but yeah, they're super comfortable, keep your package intact, and stop you getting chafed and stuff like that. So, yeah, if you're worried, if you've got bigger legs and stuff, and you're worried about them rubbing together, invest in some tights, they're super, super comfortable, and yeah, I pretty much wear tights every single, every single run nearly. Now, if it does get a little bit colder and I need something with a little bit more length, warmth, I have these which I'm just gonna have to pull on out, the inside out. And they're just the same. I think these are maybe 40 or $50, but they are a long version of the other ones. So yeah, like I said, if it gets cold, then I'll chuck those on. Um, but yeah, usually just the short tights and the shorts, which shorts, I'm very picky with shorts. Um, I like one particular style usually, and it's the five inch Nike shorts. Now, I've got about 10 different pairs of these, heaps of different colors, and 
I just, whenever I see a new color come out, I just want to grab them because I love the fit. They got pockets where I want them. And yeah, let's, I'll grab a pair and we'll show you. These, this is a, just a green pair that I've got. Like I said, I've got heaps of them. Five inch, I wear size small. Um, I feel like they fit better when I size down. I'm usually a size medium, um, but I feel like the, the small fits better for me. So there we have it. This is just one pair and they have two pockets on the side, which I don't, I don't run with anything in my side pockets ever. Um, just feels annoying. But these, at, you can see at the back, the most essential pocket is the one at the back, which has got a zip there and that will open up. And that is where you're gonna put your gels when you race. And for me, with this marathon, if I end up wearing a pair of shorts like this, I might have like salt tablets or whatever. Um, it's also got like a pocket thing through there which you can like thread a shirt um, through or like a towel or something. But yeah, Nike five inch shorts, I love them. And I'll show you, I got, these are, a heritage version. I love these. I ran in these for my quickest half marathon. You guys would have seen. And yeah, these are six. So these are five inch as well. And yeah, these are called Nike Heritage shorts. Size small again. They fit great. Um, got the Kenya ones. Ran a heap of races in those. Those are sick. I actually just got these. Which are a Nike Trail. Nike trail pants. Now these, I reckon, are sick. They're a little bit different because they're trail pants. They're meant for like um, maybe longer runs or something, but they've got two little pockets for gels and they've got a big pocket for whatever, more gels and stuff. And then they, there's the second pocket there. I'll try to show you a little bit better. What do we got there? I also, I just love the design on these, like just the camo looks sick. So yeah, as you can see, they got the pocket in the middle and then they got two small pockets for gels. I wore these the other day and they're great for holding a few extra goodies and they got like just the elastic bits for holding extras. And then at the front, man, I'm in love with these shorts. I reckon they're sick. I'm winding up wearing them for my marathon. We'll have to wait and see, but size small as well, always and they're a five inch short as well. Wore these, sorry, I'm just going through my shorts now, or just some of my favorite pairs, but again, these are a newer pair of the five inch um, Nike, Nike ones, same kind of thing. Got the pocket at the back, pockets at the side, but yeah, that's it for shorts. I'm only gonna show you, well, we're moving up now, so we're gonna go to tops. I'm only going to show you a few tops, I won't show you all of them, but um, you guys would have seen recently ran my 10k in this singlet. All my Nike running singlets that I pretty much wear for my races, uh, they're all this lightweight breathable material. material. There's a few different versions of them, but um, yeah, love this one, love the feel. This one's got a bit of a more narrow back on it. But um, size large, I always wear size large. Um, so for me, I'm about 178 centimeters, um, 76 kgs, and I wear small shorts and medium tights and large singlets and tops as well, which I'll also show you. So if it is cold, then we go with a Nike long sleeve, and I don't usually wear something underneath because I live on the Gold Coast and even when it is cold, I'm pretty warm after 15, 20 minutes. So that's for the warmer days, just go with a long sleeve. Again, I don't, I don't like wearing cotton and stuff when I run. So I opt for, majority of you guys know I love Nike gear. So just all breathable, it's made specifically for running. So now that it's getting a little bit warmer, but it's still a little bit chilly in the morning, I'll go for like a, just a, just a T. I love this one, love the design on that. Really breathable. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now that's it for clothing, I think. And I'm pretty sure that's it for overall the whole video. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, let me know what you think. Like I said, any questions that you have about any of this clothing, um, sizing, little bits and pieces, just leave a comment below. I'll get back to it straight away. And another thing, just go like, subscribe, show a little bit of love. And yeah, I'm sorry it's taken a few weeks to get this video out, but I'm gonna start pumping them out again, hopefully. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.